so this is another strange module which i thought i would do because i've seen these questions and then i didn't know where to exactly place these questions and where can you place these questions we place this under the chapter and then that really doesn't sync because this is not a clinical question this is more of a lab question but these lab questions also somebody has to teach us because they're asking these questions so somebody has to teach i have taught these things but not exactly in order some place i would have mentioned 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 this is one very very important significant module that i'm trying to do over here where lab is the king let us see question number one ask for the exam which among the following antibodies is not seen in apla antiphospholipid antibody syndrome now called aps antiphospholipid syndrome anti beta 2 glycoprotein anti anexin anti cardiolipin anti phospholipid antibody this is one question second question is a child underwent tonsillectomy so you can see this question first so this is a very straightforward question if you know the lab thing you know the answer otherwise you don't know the answer this is a more clinical plus lab kind of a question a child underwent tonsillectomy at 6 years of age without any complications at the age of 12 during a pre operative screening for laparotomy he was found to have elevated aptt aptt with normal pt so elevated aptt with normal pt family history not contributory what is the diagnosis so you have two questions here okay then we'll come to the other two questions okay so these two questions are there how do you approach these two questions which of the following antibodies is not seen in aps okay so this is more if you know aps then probably you can answer this let us see what does it actually mean and then we'll come back to the remaining questions let us see the antibodies which are actually seen in aps so that brings us to this very important important discussion aps was previously called as anti phospholipid antibody syndrome apla syndrome now we are not calling it as apla syndrome we are just calling it as anti phospholipid syndrome we'll see why so we are not calling it as apla syndrome we are just calling it as anti phospholipid syndrome just anti phospholipid syndrome what is the meaning of this term called anti phospholipid syndrome okay so that means that a person should be having a clinical criteria to call it anti phospholipid syndrome there should be a laboratory criteria to call it anti phospholipid syndrome when clinical and laboratory criteria are together satisfied we call it as aps so clinical criteria should be there laboratory criteria should be there when they are together satisfied we call it as anti phospholipid syndrome that means you understood let us see what is the laboratory criteria so laboratory criteria laboratory criteria means you should be having any of these three antibodies okay any of these three antibodies which are present twice okay which are present twice over a period of 12 weeks over a period of 12 weeks you are having any of these three antibodies present twice over a period of 12 weeks then that is actually called as positive so you can have laboratory criteria means any one of these three antibodies the first antibody is called anti cardiolipin antibody anti cardiolipin antibody uh second one is called anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibody so third one second one is called anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibody third antibody we will see later so first two antibodies anti cardiolipin antibody anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibody igg bar igm igg bar igm igg bar igm igg bar igm as per the criteria i am saying this is called modified saporos criteria which we discussed in detail so igg bar igm here also igg bar igm here also we are doing checking by elisa here also we are checking by elisa here also we are checking by elisa here also we are checking by elisa and this is the most sensitive this is the most sensitive Oh, here nothing like that so this is the most sensitive test and value of more than 40 igg uh, phospholipid units we call it is so more than 40 is very significant here value of more than 40 significant here there is no value like that to remember so two antibodies are there cardiolipin is there beta 2 glycoprotein is there third antibody is called lupus anticoagulant so third antibody is called lupus anticoagulant this is the most specific antibody so this is the most specific antibody this antibody is detected indirectly indirectly right we'll see how it is detected indirectly it is detected by its potential in vitro to increase aptt so its potential in vitro to increase aptt is what we are actually testing for so indirectly it can actually prolong your aptt indirectly it can actually prolong your aptt this is one thing it can also prolong your drvvt so diluted russell's viper venom test time or drvvt also it can actually prolong so you have lupus anticoagulant which is the most specific antibody which is an indirectly detected antibody by prolongation of aptt or by prolongation of drvvt this is called the lab criteria for aps very important question this is called lab criteria for aps everybody knows this is the lab criteria for aps and i think all of you would have studied this also 
having seen this let us try to go back to the question so once again i'll tell you anti cardiolipin antibody igg or igm present in titers titer more than 40 is what is significant at least 12 weeks apart two times measured by elisa correct anti beta to glycoprotein igg or igm 12 weeks apart elisa lupus anticoagulant two occasions detected according to the guidelines detected according to the guidelines means apdd prolongation or diluted russell's viper venom test prolongation indirectly detected okay so these many things you know okay this is the lab criteria for saparo modified saparo criteria the lab part so which among the following antibody is not seen in aps previously called apla so anti beta to glycoprotein seen we have seen that now anti cardiolipin seen we have seen that now then we have a confusion between the next two anexin there is a confusion phospholipid antibody there is a confusion how do we answer this question it's a tough question it's a tough question it is just trying to test out okay whether you know why this name apla was changed to aps this is just trying to test out that when i say anti phospholipid antibody syndrome it was previously called anti phospholipid antibody syndrome we have a feeling that we have a lot of anti phospholipid antibodies what are we having here we are not having any anti phospholipid antibodies because we are not having any anti phospholipid antibodies we change the name from apla to aps now what is the meaning of aps it is just called anti phospholipid syndrome okay phospholipid syndrome because if you look at this molecule called platelet there is something called phosphatidyl serine here phosphatidyl serine is seen in the inner membrane from the inner membrane phosphatidyl serine by a process called flipping comes to the outer membrane of the platelet it comes to the outer membrane of the platelet by this process called flipping once phosphatidyl serine comes to the outer membrane of the platelet or surface of the platelet this phosphatidyl serine will bind to beta 2 glycoprotein or annexin so many things are there of which two important things are beta 2 glycoprotein and annexins so beta 2 glycoproteins and annexins are phospholipid binding proteins correct they bind to what they bind to phosphatidyl serine so they are called as phospholipid binding proteins in this disease called aps we are having antibody against them okay so we are having antibody against what phospholipid binding protein are we having antibody against phospholipid no we are having antibody against phospholipid binding protein so we are having antibody against beta 2 glycoprotein it's a phospholipid binding protein we are having antibody against annexin though it's not part of the criteria it is a phospholipid binding protein do you understand my point which means that we don't call it as anti phospholipid antibody syndrome because there is no antibody against phospholipid it is antibody against the phospholipid binding protein so this anti phospholipid antibody thing is not seen in aps aps does not have anti phospholipid antibody it has antibodies against phospholipid binding proteins and few other things that is why the correct answer to this question is anti phospholipid antibody but nobody got it right majority of the students got it wrong okay so i once again repeat as per the criteria we are having three antibodies and so many antibodies are there which are not part of the criteria the three antibodies which are part of the criteria are anti cardiolipin anti beta 2 glycoprotein both igg and igm both igg and igm both detected by elisa both detected by elisa and have to be positive twice over 12 weeks third is lac lac is actually indirectly detected by prolongation of aptt by prolongation of drvvt or aptt right and this also has to be positive twice over 12 weeks period so these are the three antibodies which are part of the criteria now apart from this we have few antibodies which are not part of the criteria that is your antibody against annexin anti annexin 5 that is not part of the criteria anti prothrombin that is also not part of the criteria we have anti cardiolipin beta 2 glycoprotein antibodies which are iga so g and m are part of the criteria a is not there in the criteria anti prothrombin is again not there in the criteria anti annexin 5 is also not there in the criteria but these are also antibodies that you have to remember all these antibodies are together called as the antibodies in aps and we never have something called anti phospholipid antibody if you don't know your lab you are going to go totally wrong here that's why knowing your lab is very very important 
ओके सो एंटी कार्डियोलाइपिन एंटी बीटा टू ग्लाइकोप्रोटीन डूपस एंटी क्वागलिन और द थ्री एंटीबॉडीज इन द क्राइटीरिया एंटीबॉडीज नॉट देयर इन द क्राइटीरिया एनेक्सिन प्रोथ्रोमिन एंड द आई जी ए कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ कार्डियोलाइपिन बीटा टू ग्लाइकोप्रोटीन ऑफ विच दिस बीटा टू ग्लाइकोप्रोटीन एनेक्सिन एक्सेट्रा आर फॉस्फो लाइपिड बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन सो देर इज नो एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट फॉस्फो लाइपिड इट इज एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट फॉस्फो लाइपिड बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन दट इज वे वी चेंज द नेम फ्रॉम एंटी फॉस्फो लाइपिड एंटीबॉडी सिंड्रोम टू एंटी फॉस्फो लाइपिड सिंड्रोम बिकॉज इट इज एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट फॉस्फो लाइपिड बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन Okay, so that is why this answer is anti-phospholipid antibody. Hope you understood. Now let us try to see the next question. Before we see the next question, I want you to be very very clear with this because they will ask you this left, right, and center. Let's come back to the criteria. The criteria is this lupus anticoagulant. So lupus anticoagulant is detected by prolongation of APTT. So in vitro, this antibody has the capacity to prolong APTT. when you are having aptt how will you approach this that is the next part of the question so you are having an aptt you should be knowing how to actually approach this this is very very important now we will see how we approach this lab wise before we see how we approach this lab wise we have a clinical criteria also yes we have a clinical criteria it's not just uh, your lab clinical criteria for apla is also there clinical criteria is thrombosis and pregnancy morbidity so in pregnancy it can cause pregnancy morbidity adults it can cause thrombosis so these are the two things thrombosis can be anything it can be venous more than arterial thrombosis we will see all that venous more than arterial thrombosis pregnancy morbidity can be more than 10 weeks one or more miscarriage so every time you have a miscarriage after 10 weeks you think of aps less than 10 weeks three or more miscarriages Three or more miscarriages, less than ten weeks. So it's like not common less than ten weeks. It is more common after ten weeks. But remember, genetic abnormalities are the most common cause of first trimester abortion. Cervical incompetence is the most common cause for second trimester abortion. So in either case, it is not APS that's the most common cause, but it's more common to see miscarriages due to APS after ten weeks. Then you are having a premature delivery. That is less than thirty-four weeks delivery of a morphologically normal neonate. less than 34 weeks delivery of a morphologically normal neonate due to preeclampsia eclampsia or help syndrome so they are also have to think of aps so preeclampsia eclampsia or help syndrome you have to think of aps because premature delivery of a morphologically normal neonate because of preeclampsia eclampsia help syndrome can also be due to aps so pregnancy morbidity less than 10 weeks means three or more abortions more than 10 weeks means even one single abortion and premature delivery of a morphologically normal neonate less than 34 weeks due to preeclampsia eclampsia help syndrome so that is clinical criteria in this clinical criteria if you are getting antibody positive that's more than enough and clinical criteria outside pregnancy is all about all about thrombosis 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 which can be venous or arterial thrombosis of which venous more than arterial most common cause for an acquired thrombosis is apla most common acquired cause for thrombosis apla most common inherited cause for thrombosis factor 5 leiden mutation okay but factor 5 leiden mutation produces only venous thrombosis apla can produce aps now can produce both venous and arterial thrombosis of which venous thrombosis is more important got it yes so now you know that aps is a disease we we'll leave pregnancy for the time being uh if is a disease where we have thrombosis on one side yes we have these antibodies on the other side so thrombosis on one side we have the antibodies on the other side why do we get so much of thrombosis why do we get so much of thrombosis see this phosphatidyl serine which comes on to the outer membrane is actually bound by beta 2 glycoprotein annexin all those things which are the phospholipid binding proteins they are responsible for apoptosis of the platelet when you are having an antibody against beta 2 glycoprotein or you are having an antibody against annexin that prevents this binding or when this binding is prevented then apoptosis of the platelet is prevented or rather this complex will increase the affinity of the platelet that is the reason why you are having so much of thrombosis got it so thrombosis is very 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 important here so why do we actually get thrombosis is because there is decreased apoptosis of platelet why we are having no apoptosis of platelet because we are having antibody against beta 2 glycoprotein or annexin which are responsible for binding to phosphatidyl serine and causing apoptosis so because of this reason we are not having apoptosis or activation of the platelet there is also something called resistance for protein c protein c requires binding to phospholipid for its activation so the, here there is competition to that binding so there is protein c uh, resistance resistance to action of protein c 
So when there is resistance to action of protein C and apoptosis of the platelet is reduced, these are the two causes of which this is most important, the patient has thrombosis. So please be very, very clear in your mind that APS is a disease where there is thrombosis, thrombosis, thrombosis and these platelets are getting activated. So they are getting aggregated, aggregated, aggregated everywhere. So the number of platelets will be slightly low, thrombocytopenia. But again, remember, it is never going to be less than 50,000. It is always going to be 50,000 to 1 lakh. So some thrombocytopenia will be there. But in reality, there will be no thrombosis, there will be no bleeding, but only thrombosis. That is why we are discussing this right now because HIT as well as APS are two conditions that you should never forget in medicine where the patient has thrombocytopenia in blood. Correct. But is that significant enough to produce bleeding? No, it is not significant enough to produce bleeding. And on the contrary, they are getting thrombosis as the clinical manifestation. So APS patient will have thrombocytopenia in blood, but thrombosis as the clinical manifestation. Right. Why thrombocytopenia? Because platelets are not killed and they aggregate quickly. So number of platelets in circulation comes down, but not to less than 50,000. Why thrombosis? Because there is no apoptosis of the platelet. There is resistance to the action of protein C. So protein C resistance as well as decreased apoptosis of the platelet is the reason why you are having so much of thrombosis in APS. Okay, so now APS as a disease, I think you've understood now. Clinical part you've understood, the lab part you have understood. Now the question, let us go back to this question. A child underwent tonsillectomy, so this is the second question, at 6 years of age without any complication. At the age of 12, uh, during a preoperative screening, found to have elevated APTT with a normal PT. Uh, family history not contributory, what will you mark as the answer? What will you mark as the answer? Again, very interesting question. Child underwent tonsillectomy at 6 years of age without any complication at the end of tw at the age of 12 years preoperative screening was found to have elevated APTD with normal PT. Will you mark as the answer? If you don't know anything about the other causes, will you mark APS as the answer? You will never mark APS as the answer. Elevated APTT can be seen in APS. I told you, you know, lupus anticoagulant can indirectly cause elevation of your APTD. But to cause, to say something is APS, you need clinical and lab criteria. There is no clinical criteria here. So because there is no clinical criteria here, I will never think of APS. APS is a combination, clinical and lab combination. Here there is no clinical, there is only lab. And lab also has to be elevated twice over a 12 week period, even that is not mentioned here. So I will not consider this. Okay, that is fine. Then why have I given APS as an option in this question? That brings us to this very important detailing. This detailing is so, so, so very important. That means we have to see what is this lupus anticoagulant. Lupus anticoagulant in vitro can cause prolongation of APTT. In vitro can cause prolongation of APTT. Whenever you are having a prolongation of APTT, but PT is normal, okay? In vitro you are having a prolongation of APTT. This prolongation of APTT can be due to a deficiency of clotting factors. We'll see what are the clotting factors, etc. Deficiency of clotting factors or it can be due to the presence of inhibitors which can be antibody, lupus anticoagulant, anything like that. It can be due to the presence of inhibitors or you can even call it as due to the presence of antibodies. Okay, this is confirmed with a mixing study. So the second part of APTT positive is that you have to do a mixing study. Mixing study is mixing with normal plasma. Okay, mixing with normal plasma. After mixing study, if APTT normalizes or APTT is still prolonged. After mixing study, if APTT normalizes, then there is a factor deficiency. Correct. After mixing study, if APTT normalizes, it is a factor deficiency. After mixing study, if APTT is still high, after mixing study, if APTT is still high, then it means that it is an antibody or some inhibitor or something like that. So once again, repeat, APTT prolongation can be due to the presence of a deficiency. That means some factor is not there. We will see what is APTT, what are the factors, etc. So APTT prolongation can be due to the presence of a deficiency, factor 8 deficiency, factor 9 deficiency, factor 11 deficiency, whatever it is, it can be a deficiency. Same way APTT prolongation can be due to the presence of antibodies or inhibitors. Lack is a perfect example. It can be an antibody or an inhibitor. How do you know this? By mixing study. What is the meaning of mixing study? Patient's plasma, normal plasma. APTT is prolonged, so mixing with normal plasma, one to one ratio. Now if APTT normalizes, it means that it was due to the presence of deficiency because if there is a deficiency you mix with the normal plasma it gets corrected if it is due to the presence of an inhibitor or an antibody even if you mix with normal plasma it is not going to be corrected so if APT normalizes after mixing study then it is a factor deficiency so APTT does not normalize after mixing study then it is a problem with an inhibitor or an antibody which is very likely to be lack okay and this lack APTT will be corrected by adding excess phospholipid 
so will be corrected by adding phospholipid so this lack will be corrected by adding excess phospholipid okay so hope i have not confused you let us just try to look at this question more scientifically and how we get it for the exam a person who has aptt prolongation okay person who has aptt prolongation with the pt normal aptt prolongation with the pt normal when you when you think of a patient like that when you think of a patient like that you know that aptt prolongation means intrinsic pathway and common pathway are involved of which pt is normal means i'm taking off the common pathway so it's a intrinsic pathway defect intrinsic pathway defect correct or it can be due to the presence of inhibitors antibodies inhibitors were antibodies and inside that category we have lac lupus anticoagulant yes intrinsic pathway antibodies intrinsic pathway defects means factor 8 defect factor 9 defect correct factor 11 defect yes 8 defect 11 defect 9 defect factor 12 deficiency all these things can be there all these things can be there clear yes so keeping all these things in mind we'll see how to approach this aptt prolonged pt normal we divide patients into three categories one severe bleeding second mild bleeding third no bleeding so severe bleeding mild bleeding no bleeding severe bleeding can be due to factor 8 deficiency what is factor 8 deficiency hemophilia a so hemophilia a factor 9 deficiency what is factor 9 deficiency called hemophilia b so hemophilia a hemophilia b and what is carrying factor 8 in circulation von willebrand disease so von willebrand disease factor 8 has a half life of 12 hours if von willebrand factor is not there it will come to 2 2 and a half hours so von willebrand disease so von willebrand disease factor 8 deficiency factor 9 deficiency are the causes for a prolonged aptt with severe bleeding and normal pt mild bleeding means it is a factor 11 deficiency so factor 11 deficiency this is called hemophilia c so hemophilia a is 8 deficiency hemophilia b is 9 deficiency hemophilia c is 11 deficiency but this is autosomal recessive 9 and 8 are all x-linked recessive 9 and 8 are x-linked recessive everything else is autosomal recessive von willebrand disease is autosomal dominant so 9 and 8 deficiencies are x-linked recessive it is more common that is hemophilia a then you have hemophilia b that is 9 deficiency then you are having von willebrand disease that is autosomal dominant and then you are having factor 11 deficiency mild bleeding autosomal recessive no bleeding means okay no bleeding means it can be due to factor 12 deficiency yes it can be due to lack yes lack it can also be due to two things that help 12 to get activated that is called high molecular weight kininogen so high molecular weight kininogen deficiency or it can also be due to pre calicrine deficiency so pre calicrine deficiency so aptd prolonged pt normal and the patient having no bleed means factor 12 deficiency is possible lack is possible high molecular weight kinogen deficiency is possible pre calicrine deficiency is also possible of which factor 12 deficiency very very important for the exam lack also very very important for the exam in this setting we do mixing study in this setting we do mixing study at the end of mixing study if aptt normalizes if aptt normalizes that means that it is a factor deficiency factor deficiency and still aptt prolonged means it's very likely to be lack very likely to be lack so part 3 of the study is that you are mixing you are actually repeating the study with high phospholipid with high phospholipid you are mixing with a plasma that contains very high phospholipid so at that point aptt normalizes so high phospholipid plasma aptt normalizes this is equal to lack this is the sum total of what we have studied the very simple thing if you know it's okay otherwise you please study it now it's very important pivotal and then we'll come back to the question So, APTD prolonged PT normal, severe bleeding, hemophilia A, hemophilia B, von Willebrand's disease. APTD prolonged PT normal, mild bleeding, hemophilia C, factor 11 deficiency. APTD prolonged PT normal, no bleed means can be deficiency of 12 pre calicrine or high molecular weight kinogen or can be the presence of lack. For that, look for mixing studies. At the end of mixing study, APTD normalizes means factor deficiency. APTD still prolonged means lack. How do you confirm mix with the plasma that contains high phospholipid? Then APTD becomes normal in lack. Okay, this much you know. Now we'll come back to the question asked for NEET. This is the question asked in NEET. 
a child underwent tonsillectomy at the age of 6 years without any complication which means at 6 years there was no bleeding age of 12 during laparotomy preoperative screening found to have elevated apdt so this is a case of apdt elevation pt normal but no bleed anywhere apdt elevation pt normal no bleed anywhere correct so hemophilia out a vitamin k deficiency means pt will be wrong so that is out aps no thrombosis nothing so this is a clear case of factor 12 deficiency or high molecular weight kinase deficiency or precalcarin deficiency this is the answer many people wrote it as aps i don't know why they wrote it as aps in the wildest of dreams they may be thinking something it is not aps it is this okay are you clear with this now yes